So it's been, I want to say between two to three days since I did the serial dilution and plating. And I'm going to show you a dilution series. So this is the most diluted. This would be the 10 to the 1. So the first one that I took from my initial sample. And as you can see, you can't see individual colonies. It's all a smear. So this has too many cells to count. So we wouldn't count that one. Next up, we have the 10 to the 3. This has some that have individual colonies, but still it's too much. So again, condensation. So that's why when you incubate it, you incubate it inverted so that whatever is on here won't fall onto your agar that has the nutrients for the bacteria or the fungus to grow. So this is a lot, even though they're individualized. So I wouldn't count that one. As we get to the three most diluted plates, in this case, the 10 to the 4, you can see that you have individual cells. So you could count, but I think this plate by guesstimation would have more than 300 cells on it. So would not count that one. We tend to count between 30 to 300 colonies, individual colonies. Some people might go 200 to 300, 20 to, to 200. And we could count 10 to the six. Actually, this is 10 to the five. It has some individual cells or single cells, but there are also some smaller ones. So I think I would count the 10 to the 6, right? And in grad school, this is how I would count when I was doing soil samples to see different kind of bacteria and how many were in the sample. And this is what they, they would do in wastewater using NPM. So I would take a marker that's a different color, good contrast, and I would tap on each of the individual colonies that I can see. I would ignore the ones that are fused together because in that case I don't know how many cells are making up that clump so I would go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 and so forth and so forth additionally or alternatively you could also create like a quadrant on your plate so four squares or quarters and you would count how many are in one quarter and then multiply that by four Again, because it's an estimation. Uh, let us see. Again, this one is 10 to the 6. No, this is 10 to the 2. So this is very concentrated. And again, you can see this is a different microbe. And it is so concentrated, it grows like a paint swash. Um, let us see. The next one. Again, we have the 10 to the 3. So... This one, mm, still concentrated. I'm not seeing individual colonies. We get to 10 to the 4. We start seeing individual cells. So one could count this, but I, I can tell that it's a lot. So I wouldn't choose this one. 10 to the 5 looks good to count. You can see the individual colonies on it or cells. But I would probably choose 10 to the 6. So this was the least diluted. And I have another one. These are all different microbes. They might be fungi or they fungus or they might be bacteria. Again, this one, interesting. This was 10 to the 4. Too concentrated. Can't count anything there. Mm, 10 to the 3 possibly could count something here. Um, we have 10 to the 6, what is that, 7? No, 10 to the 5. We could count this one because you can see the individual cells. Or we could choose the 10 to the 4 because we can see individual cells. So, yeah, that is, um, what is it, serial dilution and plating. And then the number that I've counted, there is a formula that I would plug the number of cells that I counted on the selected dilution plate. And then I'll use the dilution that I use to count. And then I would use the volume and do the calculation. It's late. It's Friday. I've been here more than eight hours. So I'm going to put these in the refrigerator 
to sort of slow their growth and then when I come back in I will do a proper count so you can see and do a calculation so see you then so I'm back and I have the plates from the cereal dilution and plating and uh, they are about five days old what I did is I looked at them on Friday didn't have time to do the calculation for the colony forming units so that essentially the concentration or the estimation so I placed them in the fridge at 40 degrees Celsius to slow down the growth of the microbe so I'm going to show you what the serial dilution resulted in so for this one I did a full plating of the dilution series I had one to six so I had six tubes not including the original tube with the sample that had about one ml of the sample and if you recall I took one ml from my sample and put it in nine ml of water and so and then I plated 100 ml from that first tube and this is what it produced so as you can see it looks like a smear it's too concentrated which is expected because this is the first dilution so I'm not expecting to have colonies on this that I can count then I took 1 ml from the tube this came from and put it in 9 ml of water so that was my second tube so my 10 to the 2 and again too concentrated it looks more like a smear it's hard to see from this side because there's condensation on the lid but it looks more like a smear we're seeing some individual colonies but this is still too concentrated to count from this tube so the number two tube i took one ml and put it in the third tube that contains nine ml of water you see where i'm going right and so this is the third tube still colony is more of a smear still concentrated but there are some individual colonies still too concentrated to count from this i took one ml put it in the fourth tube so my 10 to the 4 and as you can start seeing we're getting some more individual so the colonies are starting to form into individuals oh the glare from the light is making it difficult but you can see the individual colonies still too concentrated to count because what i want is uh, colonies individual colonies that fall between 30 to 300 or it could be 20 to 200 colony forming units so when I count them and then same process 1 ml from this tube plated on this agar plate they're all the same they're LB media and you can start seeing individual colonies perfect right I still think this is a bit much so I am going to use my final tube because I had six and as you can see they're more spaced out and they're easier to count so this one would have the least concentrated so this one would have the least number of microbes whereas the very first one would have the most because it is the most concentrated right so you can see the difference between the very first tube and the last tube so let me show you how i go ahead and count it so this is my process of counting uh, colony forming units. This is what I did when I did my master's degree and I was used doing uh, soil samples to enumerate the relative abundance of different types of microbes that are in the soil. I was mostly working on bacteria though. So I have a marker that is a different color and that will provide contrast. And I'm just going to go ahead and tap each of the colony as I count and then once I'm done I'll write that number down and I put it into a formula some people if they have too much what they'll do they'll make a gradient a quadrant so they'll draw two equal lines down the the middle of the plate one vertically one horizontally and they'll count 
how many are in one quadrant and then that number they'll multiply it by four because it's an estimation but I'm going to go ahead and do the actual count so let's go Forty one, forty two, forty three, forty four, forty five, forty six, forty seven, forty eight, forty nine, one hundred and forty nine. And as a rule, again, I want it to be between twenty to two hundred or thirty to three hundred. And if you have colonies like this one that are joined, they're rules. So you can either choose to ignore the count of the clumped ones, or you could just count it as one. It's best to ignore it because you don't know how many cells are inside of it so i have my number and then i'll put it into the calculation into the formula so here are some things that we need to calculate or to do our estimation of the number of cells in our original sample right so we want the number of colonists counted on the plate that I chose to count so I said that was 149 and the dilution that we use was 10 to the 6 which is a million and we need the volume that we pipetted on or we plated onto the plate which was 0 0.1 ml or 100 microliters so i'm going to use ml because the formula uses ml as its unit so the formula is cfu per ml and the cfu stands for colony forming units per liquid and so we have uh, each of these would represent a colony forming unit and this formula what it does, it helps to estimate the concentration of the viable microorganisms per ml, so milliliters, of the liquid sample. And this is based on the number of colonies growing on the plate. So I want you to keep in mind that one of these, so one colony forming unit, equals about a thousand live cells. Right, so let us finish our formula. So we have CFU per ml equals the number of colony counted, which would be our 149 times our dilution factor, or 1 over our dilution factor, so 10 to the 6 or 1 divided or 10 to the minus 6. And then we also have times the volume plated, which is 0 0.1 ml to match the ml there. So with dilution factor, volume plated. And so that gives, so we say 1 times, oops, 1 times 10 to the 6, as I said, it's a million. We have our 149, which is our number of colonies counted, times 149, times our volume plated, which is 0.1, times 0.1 equals, that's a big number, <laughs> let us put it into our scientific and, and our notation. So this is 1.49 times 10 to the 7. CFU per ml in our original sample. So can you imagine if this came from our most diluted sample and we have that many cells? There's no um there's no way. And to estimate how many would approximately be in the very concentrated one, you'll multiply it by the dilution factor, but that's amazing. So that is how you calculate your colony forming units per ml to estimate the number of viable cells you have in your sample, whether it's a gram of sample or a milliliter of sample. Thank you. Catch you in the next one.